Hi everyone, my name is Phil and this is our second module out of three for our API 2000 webinar. Today I will be covering the specific provisions that actually are used to determine the vetting requirements and vacuum requirements for API 2000 and actually cover the calculations that are required for that. Now before I cover the details of the calculations, I want to first contrast the current main body or chapter 3 of API 2000 versus Annex A. Annex A used to be part of the main body uh, back in the 5th edition earlier. However, due to some recent research in vapor contraction and, and some vapor generation, they found that in very rare circumstances, the old provision was actually unconservative. And so to alleviate this, they developed this new standard, which is now in the main body, and they relegated those old provisions into Annex A. Annex A can still be used under various limitations. It can only be used for smaller tanks. It cannot account for insulation and has certain requirements in terms of the temperature that's assumed. Um, in general, um, tanks that were designed back in Annex A have been used by industry for several years and have no incidents. However, because of these new research, uh, it is best practice to use the main body, at least for newer tanks. In general, it is considered acceptable to use Annex A for existing tanks uh, because these tanks were designed under Annex A. Now, normal venting. Uh, let's begin with normal venting for API 2000. Here we consider the effects on normal venting through liquid movement. When product is getting pumped into the tank, uh, it generates vapors which uh, needs to be uh, alleviated out breathing. Um, this equation is actually a direct flow rate conversion. Essentially, the amount of flow coming into the tank must be the same amount of flow rate coming out of the tank. 8.02 is merely a factor that accounts for unit conversion. However, for volatile products, where, which is defined as products with a vapor pressure greater than 0.73 PSI, this can actually generate an additional amount of vapors. And so this flow rate is actually doubled. However, it is still just a straight a flow rate conversion. For inbreeding, this does not happen. Uh, when liquid is getting pumped out of the tank, there's not that, none of that extra gen vapor generation inside the tank. And so it is, once again, it's just a one-to-one -one ratio with that 8.02 unit conversion factor. For temperature or thermal effects on normal inbreeding and outbreeding, we see that it, the equations are dependent on the location because these determine the ambient conditions and temperatures of your tank. And as an input, the uh, API 2000 uses the latitude to determine where the tank is located. It's also dependent on the volume and insulation of your tank. For inbreeding, we also see that it's dependent on vapor pressure because once again, for volatile products, it can actually cause additional vapor generation. And so for these values, we look up in the table in API 2000, uh, what these different parameters are uh, to find these Y factors or C factors and one plus again the 1.51 and 3.08 are really unit conversions to help uh, calculate these different values. Now when considering insulation, this depends on the thickness of the insulation as well as properties like the heat transfer coefficient or the thermal conductivity. API 2000 lists typical values that can be used for these different parameters. Only a portion of the tank uh, surface area is actually used to determine the, how much credit can be gained from insulation. It's the portion of the tank that's actually insulated. You take a ratio of the insulated portion to the total surface area of the tank. And that's how much uh, you can actually account for insulation. An alternate reduction factor is found where, for double watt tanks where the second watt can be considered a form of insulation as well. That's it for normal venting. We will now consider the condition of emergency venting. As to the details of emergency venting, it is a heat flux equation where we determine the amount of heat flow that's generated from that adjacent fire into the tank. 
we have different uh, properties like the latent heat of vaporization, the temperature, the relative molecular mass, and the heat input parameter, which is a function of the wetted surface area of the tank and the design pressure. Essentially, how much of the tank is actually exposed to the fire. This is dependent on engineering judgment. A quick note about F, which is the environmental factor. This is determined. This accounts for things like insulation or whether the tank is underground. However, this is subject to AHA authority uh, or the authority under jurisdiction, and as a result, must be agreed upon. This is set by NFPA. Now, I want to cover Annex A. Once again, Annex A is the previous provision of the normal venting conditions in API 2000. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, it is acceptable to use Annex A for existing tanks, uh, that tanks that were built uh, prior to the release of these new updated standards. And API 2000, the main body, Chapter 3, should be used for newer tanks. Similar to the main body of API 2000, Annex A for liquid movement into and out of the tank uses a direct unit conversion of the flow rate to determine the venting requirements. And also similar to the main body, for outbreeding, the unit conversion rate is actually double for volatile liquids. Now, unlike the main body, which uses vapor pressure to determine whether a, a product is considered volatile or not, Annex A uses the flash point, which may not be as accurate, but back then it was considered acceptable and a good enough approximation to determine whether a product was volatile or not. To actually calculate the amount of venting required, we use this table where we use as an input the amount of liquid coming into or out of the tank in units of barrel per hour. And we look up these factors that are dependent on the temperature, which once again determine whether the product is volatile or not. However, this is really just a universal conversion, once again, of the flow rate, converting it from barrels per hour to standard cubic feet per hour. For thermal effects, we essentially look up the value in a table where we, as an input, is really only dependent on the volume of the tank. It, the annex does not consider insulation or where the tank is located. Um, and for outbreeding, we also see that if the tank is volatile, there is also an additional factor to account for there. But we, based on these inputs, we actually look up the value in the table, and that is the required flow rate necessary. For intermediate values that are not between, that are between rows, uh, one must interpolate between these values to find the actual flow rate necessary for thermal venting. And so those are the details for actually calculating the necessary flow rates for API 2000. Next module, we will go through a product that PEMI has developed, a spreadsheet to actually calculate these flow rates for you automatically.